My name is Amy Walklin. I am a OSU Master Gardener intern class of 2020 and today I'm going to be talking about probably my favorite subject when it comes to gardening and that would be companion planting. Um, there's many reasons why you might use companion planting in your garden such as planting certain plants that are beneficial to one another for one reason or another. Um, certain plants may put nutrients into the soil or take nutrients out. Um, and one of my favorite ways, and probably I would say the most beneficial to have in your garden, would be companion planting for pest control in your garden. So that is what we're going to talk about today. And I would love to show you around some of the things that I have put in my garden uh, for companion planting for pest control. So let's go in the garden and see. Borage, a great companion plant for tomatoes, squash, strawberries, and really most plants. It is best for deterring tomato hornworms and cabbage worms if you plant near them. And one thing I learned while doing the research for this project was borage may actually benefit any plant that it is growing next to by increasing resistance to pest and disease. As a bonus, it also makes a great living mulch and attracts many pollinators and beneficial insects. And just a reminder, borage is self-seeding and does quite well at doing that. So if you don't want a bunch of them next year, make sure you collect those seeds this year. So as you can see here, I have some gorgeous borage. Um, it has actually kind of taken over this bed. It likes to spread and reseed itself, but it is absolutely beautiful. Um, it is actually just planted right now with some of my celery. Garlic. Garlic is very helpful in many ways. Um, you can plant it near your roses to repel aphids, and it's also very beneficial for many fruit trees. Uh, apple, pear, um, plus cucumbers, peas, lettuce, and celery. If you plant under your peach trees, it can help repel the borers that like those. Garlic also accumulates sulfur, a naturally occurring fungicide, which will help in your garden with disease prevention. So I would definitely recommend garlic in many areas of your garden. Okay, so this is a busy raised bed that I have here. So I actually have um, lettuce planted in this one along with roses and peas and a grape plant. So I went ahead and have garlic and nasturtiums planted with this one. Peppermint and catmint or catnip. Peppermint can deter white cabbage moths, ants, rodents, flea beetles, aphids, and even fleas. And catnip or catmint can deter flea beetles, aphids, Japanese beetles, squash bugs, ants, and weevils. And over here, I have my mint, and I have it planted with my apple trees. This is a catnip plant, and I have this one actually planted right near my cabbage. Chamomile, besides being really pretty to put in your garden and being great for tea, um, it is a host to hoverflies and wasps. It also has lots of bonuses um, as far as accumulating calcium, potassium, and sulfur, later returning them to the soil. This is another plant that will also reseed itself. So again, if you don't want to have a lot of chamomile plants next year, make sure you're just collecting the seeds this year. Chives, something very common in most gardens because they grow so well and reseed themselves also, but they actually uh, will be a great plant to put near your apples, carrots, tomatoes, and any kind of brassica really, plus many others. They also help keep aphids away from tomatoes, mums, and sunflowers. Chives may also drive away Japanese beetles and carrot rust fly. A bonus planted near apple trees would be to prevent scab. Okay, and in this bed I actually 
actually I have two companion plants also. I have my chamomile over here and I have uh, my chives over here and they are actually planted in my strawberry bed. Lavender, something I'm sure most of us already have in our gardens and they're already doing some work for you. They repel fleas and moths, but they also, because of their flowers, will uh, attract many nectar feeding and beneficial insects. Planted near certain plants that are prone to white fly, they can prevent that. And also planted under or near fruit trees can deter coddling moths. So here is a beautiful lavender plant. Now these I actually have popped around my garden all over the place. I like to plant them though, especially near all of my fruit trees. Um, I have apple trees and plum trees, um, lots of other fruit trees. So I put these at least all around them, but I also put them near my roses also. Marigolds. Let's first talk about French marigolds. One really neat thing that I learned while doing this research was that French marigolds actually put out a substance in the soil, um, just in their immediate vicinity, uh, that actually kills nematodes. Um, there's actually studies that have been done that show that years after these plants have died back, it's still having the effects of killing the nematodes. But you wanna make sure that you're planting them very densely so you're not missing areas. French marigolds can also help deter white flies when you plant them around tomatoes and especially great for use in greenhouses that have enclosed spaces with many issues for white flies. Mexican marigolds are said to be the most powerful in insect repelling, plus they tend to repel the larger pests in your garden. And as a bonus, they are said to overwhelm weed roots such as bindweed. So these are marigolds and these I have currently planted near my fava beans and my green beans but I actually pop them around as many things kind of like nasturtiums as I possibly can. Alyssum, great for attracting many tiny predatory wasps and planted near basically all the fruit trees. There's actually been lots of research from the USDA regarding companion plants and using alyssums, partially as trap crops, but also to bolster the population of beneficial insects that prey on the costly crop pests. This is alyssum. It could be this color, or it could be this pretty purple color or pink colors. There's a lot of colors now to it. Um, but either way, um, I planted around or near all of my fruit trees. This is a fig tree right here. I planted all the way around in the same pot as my apple trees though also. Nasturtiums. I don't think I can say too many good things about nasturtiums. Um, besides being an amazing habitat for predatory insects such as ladybugs and many others, it's also a great companion plant for radishes, anything in the cabbage family. Plus planting near anything in the pumpkin family can deter pumpkin beetles and as a bonus, improve the growth and flavor. Even planting it as a barrier around tomatoes, cabbage, cucumbers, and many fruit trees can deter aphids, white flies, cucumber beetles, and many pests of the cucurbit family. So here is, I would say, my number one plant that I like to plant as a companion plant in my garden. How many times can I say plant? <laughs> um, and that would be nasturtium. So it's beautiful um, and it flows wonderfully and looks good planted in every bed, I would say. But it's also probably the best companion plant that you can plant. So I put it in actually all of my beds. So you'll see it in just about all of them. This is what I call my ladybug nursery from my garden a couple years ago. It was a tower of nasturtiums filled with all the life cycles of a ladybug eating tons of aphids.
much for joining me in my home garden today. I hope you had as much fun as I did chatting a lot <laughs> about my favorite subject, uh, companion planting, and that was companion planting for pest control in your garden, which I think is probably the most beneficial. Um, there's actually lots of science behind it, and I guess that's why I chose it, um, because I think it's probably the most relatable and the biggest issue that most people have in their garden. I know it's the biggest issue that I have every year, so if there's anything simple, natural that I can do or to show you to do um, about getting pests under control or kind of more of working with them in your garden as opposed to just, you know, completely getting rid of them because that's generally impossible. <laughs> um, so I hope that there are some tips and tricks that you learned today that you will give a try. Hopefully all of them, but at least one um, you can try this year. Um, it's so simple just by adding more plants to your garden. And if you're anything like me, more plants is probably already on your list. So enjoyed my bonus companions, even though they're not plants, uh, to my garden that are probably some of them are part of yours also. So I think everything and everyone has a place in the garden. And I hope that you also don't forget to not take you or your garden too seriously. Um, if you have way too much pest pressure for a certain plant or a certain type of plant or family of plant in your garden, um, you can always take that plant out, replant, reseed, or just try again next year. It's not the end of the world. Uh, gardening is supposed to be relaxing, stress reliever, make you want to be outside more. So don't let a silly pest like an aphid or a flea beetle ruin your time in the garden. So get out in your garden, get creative, and most of all, have fun. Thanks so much. Talk to you later.